today's video I wanted to discuss jumbo frames. Uh, there's a lot of questions uh, about jumbo frames out there and there's a lot of times where I come across jumbo frames in use uh, where it's actually possibly hurting the performance um, as opposed to um, speeding things up like it's supposed to just simply because it's been misconfigured um, perhaps not on the NAS but perhaps with everything else on the network. Um, so what are jumbo frames? So historical uh, frame sizes would be around the 1500 mark. So you got a, a, this is would be referred to as an MTU. So each Ethernet frame, um, every bit of data that's sending, it's sending around 1500 bytes of payload. That's the data that you're trying to send. Uh, there'll quite often be a bit of header information that goes with it. Um, but the, the whole idea here is that instead of sending, in this example of many trucks to achieve the same um, amount of, of data, the 9,000, what you can do is you can send mu one much larger truck. So it's much more efficient at getting data there, uh, which means there's improved network performance um, and just less overhead on the devices using it. So if you take a look at how a jumbo frame is made up, each, um, each Ethernet frame, if you like, is made up of two parts. You've got your payload and there's a little header that goes with it. The header information um, isn't created completely for free it needs some CPU power to do it so the important thing is is when you increase the payload size the header information is basically exactly the same it's just got more data inside it and there's a lot less start stops when you're moving the, the same amount of data so you can see from this example it's much more efficient to use the bottom option which would represent something like the largest jumbo frame of 9000 as opposed to sticking with the sort of standard size of 1500. Um, the only negative is is if you imagine all these little trucks here at the top, um, if you tried to fit this amount of data into those trucks, it's not going to work. Um, and that's the same on the network. So you must have everybody on the network set to the 9000 limit or whatever jumbo frame you set. Everybody must be using the same and some devices just aren't compatible with it. So, for example, networks with Internet access and routers typically wouldn't support um, the, the large jumbo frames. So it would normally be reserved for specific applications. So if you were putting a QNAP into a server room environment, you might have several servers serving the users in the office. That server may have uh, one of its network cards, one of its network ports linked to a switch where the users are. That would all be set to the standard uh, frame size, which would be 1500. We wouldn't call that a jumbo frame. That's just a normal ethernet frame. Um, jumbo frames all the way up to 9000 would be set on the other network adapters in the server linked to other devices in the server room, such as um, your storage area network devices, your SANs, your QNAPs, um, anything that's stored um, that's going to be communicated just between the servers. Now, it doesn't have to just be uh, physical um, network adapter separation. You can often split the frame size um, per VLAN as well. So you could have uh, one network adapter and you could set a VLAN with a jumbo frame size for that VLAN as well. So you can do other segmentation. Um, but for now, we're just talking about if you have everybody on the network set to a jumbo frame of 9000, but one device not set to 9000, there's going to be errors. Um, I, the data is either going to be uh, fragmented, it's going to need to be resent. there's going to be problems. So it will actually have the opposite effect. So instead of speeding up your network, enabling jumbo frames incorrectly can slow down the network as well, um, simply by having to do lots of retries to try and get the data there because it's all fragmented. Um, if you do decide you want to enable jumbo frames on your QNAP and you've got everything else on your network supporting it, uh, your switches, your computers, your other devices that you want to talk to, uh, setting it couldn't be easier. You simply go into the network and virtual switch on your QNAP Find the adapter you want to use for it, click the three dots over here on the right hand side and click on the configure option. And here you see the jumbo frame drop down and we've got four options for you. So generally people will choose either the default of 1500 or they'll set it down at the maximum of 9000. So if you're setting it to 9000 and you were to apply that, you have to make sure that whatever switch this is connected to also supports jumbo frames of 9000. You may not have to set it on the switch, it may, may just uh, work without having to physically set it like the, the QNAP switches. Um, but then you'd also have to make sure that you set the jumbo frames on any other device that you're connecting to. So for example, um, here on the, the Mac that I'm using here, 
Um, I would also have an option to go set the uh, the jumbo frames on this as well. So if I was to bring in my network information here, I've got my wired network adapter that I'm using. So you can click into advanced and you can go across the hardware and you can set the option down here for the MTU. So if I were to set that to manually instead of automatic, I can now change this to a custom value um, and it will let me type in a new amount. The adapter I'm using doesn't support jumbo frames, but if you've got one that does support jumbo frames, you would see here that there would be an option to go all the way up to 9,000. So you'd be able to type 9,000 in that box. So it's all down to the, the network adapter you're, you're using um, with your device um, to, to see if you can support all the way up to uh, the larger jumbo frame sizes. Um, so jumbo frames, they, they definitely can improve network performance and system performance, um, but really make sure that you're using them in the correct way. Just setting your QNAP to a jumbo frames of 9,000 will not um, help the network at all. Um, the QNAP would have to be set to it, your switch would have to support it, every user connected to it would have to support it, um, and traditionally each of those machines that you're connecting to the network, um, they may have to have a separate network connection to whichever network has your internet uh, router on it as well and your, your other standard users. So there is a, I guess, a slight confusion in, in how Jumbo Frames works, just setting it on the QNAP won't change anything. So you have to have jumbo frames enabled on every single device that's on the network communicating. Otherwise, you will not get the benefit of the jumbo frames. Um, if anybody has any questions about this, please do let me know in the comments section below and I'll try to answer it as quick as possible for you. Thanks. Bye. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you'd like to see more, please click the like and subscribe button. If you'd like to get notifications of when we release new content, please ding that bell. If you have any further questions or, or queries, you can email our YouTube team at youtube underscore uk at qnap.com.